Corporate America, the biggest pyramid scheme in the world. This article first appeared on theserialhobbyist.com August 4th, 2018, and was written by Terry Thompson. Disclaimer, if you are easily offended by the truth about your corporate career, don't read this. As always, sensitive people are free to spend their time reading someone else's blog. Today, I'm choosing to write about a subject that I've probably thought more about than nearly any other subject in my adult life. It's one that has vexed me for years, one that has bothered me, annoyed me, frustrated me, and upset me. It's something that I felt far earlier than I figured out. It has consumed nearly a decade of my life and has been a source of struggle and self-doubt. It's something that I already knew as clear as day way back in middle school, yet I forgot it somewhere in my early 20s. And now, here I am at 34 years old, reminding both you and myself of the great con that we've all been spoon-fed since we were babies. Go to college so you can get a good job and work for 40 years at a good company because that's what successful adults do. And for the past nine years, I've been a part of it. I've clocked in and out. I've commuted daily and sat in rush hour traffic for hours each way. I've spent more time away from my children than with them, working long hours without additional compensation to show for it, all in the name of proving my worth to a company that could replace me as easily as breathing. I've contributed to a cause for which I have zero personal interest or investment. I've created, innovated, and developed products that I'll never own or have any rights or recognition for. I've traded countless hours for dollars and quietly waited for someone else's opinion typed out on a piece of paper to tell me what I'm worth. I've had good bosses and I've had bad bosses, some that tried their best to inspire and others that belligerently belittled us at every turn. I've adjusted my dreams according to the paycheck that would arrive every two weeks, feeling powerless to instead adjust the paycheck to provide for my dreams. I've watched the fire that burned inside my soul when I was young get all but extinguished by the unrelenting onslaught of mediocrity all around me. I've worn the golden handcuffs for too long, and it's finally time for me to say enough is enough. It's time to come up with an escape plan. I may have to dig my way out of Alcatraz with a plastic spoon, but you'd better believe I'm going to do it. What's funny about that statement is that in reality, it's my fault that I'm here in the first place. Way back in middle school, I had no idea what I wanted to do when I grew up, but oddly enough, I knew exactly what I didn't want to do. I vowed I would never work in corporate America specifically in the oil and gas industry. I can't exactly explain why I knew that way back then. I just did. Whenever I thought about working in the oil and gas industry, I felt repulsed by it. Not because I spent my childhood hugging trees, and I certainly don't have some kind of moral aversion to oil or anything like that. I just despised it without any legitimately logical reason. I just felt it in my bones. Ironic how things turn out, isn't it? Now I work for, yep, you guessed it, an oil company. Throughout my teenage years and into my 20s, I prided myself on living every day of life to the fullest, chasing my dreams, working tirelessly for a cause, whatever it might be at the time. I dedicated myself to excellence in swimming. I always valued investments in relationships over getting straight A's, even though I made sure to do well enough in school to get into the college of my choice. I believed wholeheartedly that the bonds we make and the people that we meet will have greater and more lasting value than the statistics we achieve or the money we acquire. I spent two years serving as a missionary for my church. It was literally the best two years of my entire life. For 24 months, I got to be everything that I ever dreamed of being, with no distraction, no interruption, no diversion. I spent every second of every day trying to help, uplift, and inspire people, and it was wonderful. Afterward, I returned to college, where sadly, having completed everything in life that I actually knew for sure that I wanted to accomplish, I fell into line, just going for some nameless degree in order to someday get a decent paying but hopeless job where I could be a faceless cog in a heartless machine until I amassed enough worthless dollars to retire and live out the remainder of my days passionless and uninspired. Quite the dream, right? Looking back on it, you might ask, why did you do it? The simple answer is that I didn't want to. I did it simply because I didn't know what else to do. Then, while in that state of limbo, I got married and quickly had a child. And that's when life really comes at you fast. Suddenly you have bills to pay. Real bills. I'm not talking about just your cell phone service and car insurance. Those are child's play. So for a time, my hopes and dreams became so overshadowed by bills and the need for money to survive to the point that I all but forgot about them. I made choices that set my dreams aside in order to survive. Do I regret it? No, I can't say that I do. I did what I believed was best for my family with the information that I had at the time. Would I do it differently if I could go back and try again? Sure. But while hindsight may be 2020, that doesn't mean we can go dwelling on in the past. 
and that's why I'm writing this now. My hope is that maybe this reaches someone out there who feels a little like I did, wandering a bit, knowing their great potential, but not knowing how to apply it. If you're on that road, beware of the lie that the vast majority of the world is ignorantly going to tell you. The single most important thing that I have realized in the nine years I've spent working for large corporations in the oil and gas industry is that corporate America is the biggest pyramid scheme in the world. Behold the great pyramids of America. Whether ExxonMobil or McDonald's, corporate structure is always the same. There is a president, CEO, owner at the top. It's only one person or a small handful of people in the case of really massive companies. In a successful business, this person makes an ungodly wage and probably doesn't have to worry too much about money. Next, you have your lineup of executives. They are much more numerous than the single president or CEO, but nonetheless, they are still a very exclusive group of individuals. They usually make a massive wage, but will never make as much as the man they work for. They are all vying for the CEO's position, but their odds aren't very good considering there are far more of them than there are open positions. So they fight and stand on each other's heads to prove that they are better than the rest of the executives and should be selected as the next CEO. Another step down, you have your directors. They are much more numerous than your team of executives, but nonetheless, they are still a very small group when compared to the size of the company. Realistically, this is where the vast majority of America's highly ambitious individuals will stop. They typically make a very good wage, but cannot ever make more than the executives they work for unless they become an executive themselves. Therefore, they are all vying for an executive position, but the odds aren't very good considering there are far more hungry directors than there are executive positions. So they fight and stand on each other's heads to prove that they are better than the rest of the directors and should be selected as the next executive. In the next layer, you'll find your managers. They are far, far more numerous than the directors, but nonetheless, they are still only a small portion of the entire company. Realistically, this is where the vast majority of typical corporate careers end. They usually make a decent wage, but cannot make more than the director they work for unless they become a director themselves. Therefore, they are all vying for a director position, but the odds are pretty terrible considering there are vastly more hungry managers than there are director positions. So they fight and stand on each other's heads to prove that they are better than the rest of the managers and should be selected as the next director. One more step down and you have the supervisors. There are tons and tons of supervisors. They make a mediocre wage but cannot make more than the manager they work for unless they become a manager themselves. Therefore, they are all vying for a manager position, but the odds are absolutely atrocious considering there are countless more hungry supervisors than there are manager positions. So they fight and stand on each other's heads to prove that they are better than the rest of the supervisors and should be selected as the next manager. Lastly, you have your individual contributors. There are exponentially more individual contributors than any other position in the company. They make the worst wage of all by far and are expected to work the hardest in an effort to prove themselves worthy of a 2% cost of living adjustment at the end of each year and the hope that someday, when someone else deems fit, they can move into a supervisory role and begin their corporate ladder climb. They are all clawing and scratching to get a piece of that bottom rung, but their odds are utterly abysmal considering the fact that they amount to little more than ants scurrying around trying to stand out among the chaos after a curious child has disturbed the pile. So they fight, backstab, brown nose, schmooze, and stand on each other's heads to prove that they are better than the rest of the nameless employees and should be noticed enough to be placed in the pool of potential ladder climbers, hoping that someday, somehow, Someone else with some pull in the company will notice them and decide that they should get to have a future. So, where do I sign up? The real question is why do we continue to chase that life and somehow keep referring to it as success? And yet, most Americans view the corporate lifestyle as the pinnacle of achievement in a career. Barf. The only achievement I've reached in nine years of corporate life is turning my once vibrant soul into a hollow dust bag. By contrast, the misunderstood redheaded stepchild. Now, let's take a look at a totally different type of business, one that is, quite ironically, considered by most traditionalists to be the quintessential pyramid of pyramids, the MLM. And just as a forward, this is not a sales pitch to anyone. It's simply an examination of an alternative business structure, one that I hope will expose the lies that we have been fed for generations. You know, I have to laugh a little when I hear people refer to MLMs as pyramid schemes. Sure, the basic idea is that if you can get enough people to buy a little bit of something, it adds up to a lot. 
And then if you can recruit some people to sell some things too, then it adds up to even more as you collect small slices of whatever volume is being sold by the people you recruited. Sounds pretty pyramidy, right? But before we grab our pitchforks and start screaming, Pyramid! Let's take a closer look and see how it compares to the great corporate pyramids. The structure of an MLM is based on the principle that volume can be spread out among lots of people so that marketing channels can reach places that traditional sales techniques can't reach. So that's why there are two ways to make money in an MLM, selling products and recruiting or training. The first is quite simple. You sell a lot of stuff. You make money just like any other sales position in the world. The difference between traditional sales and an MLM, however, is in the recruiting and training side of things. The concept here is that by recruiting and building a business team, you can increase your reach and volume of sales. By being the one who has built the team, you get a small piece of the pie when your team makes sales. Likewise, the person that recruited and trained you gets a small piece of your pie when you make sales and so on and so forth. So how is that not a pyramid? The key is in the compensation structure. While the organizational structure may be pyramid-like, when you understand the compensation structure, you'll realize that it is completely linear and therefore identical for everyone regardless of how high up the ladder you are. That's because what most people fail to see is that there really isn't even a ladder at all. Most people balk right there because that concept is so foreign and jarring to our traditionally brainwashed minds. How can there not be a ladder? How can someone at the bottom have exactly the same compensation structure as the man at the top? It's actually pretty simple. Everyone has the exact same compensation structure. The guys at the top have just been working at it for longer, so they're further along. This throws corporate America's widely accepted compensation structure on its head. If you noticed in my corporate pyramid outline above, no one on a given level can make as much money as a person on the level above them without first jumping levels. But the truth about jumping levels is that there will always be fewer opportunities to jump than there are people who want to make the jump. So in the end, there will always be fewer who succeed than those who fail to make the jump. Not because of lack of effort or ability, but simply because there are never enough spots. And on top of that, the decision to make the jump isn't even in your hands. In fact, it's in the hands of someone you may or may not even know who is already on the level above you. So literally, it is impossible for everyone to have the same opportunities in their careers. The compensation structure of a traditional corporation is non-linear. It is a pyramid. Wow, that sounds awesome. Not. But don't get me wrong here. Just because the MLM compensation structure is the same for everyone in it, that doesn't mean it's a walk in the park. In fact, the very reason so many people fail in MLM businesses is because they fail to first realize that any and every step of that compensation structure staircase has to come from them and them alone. You're not going to get paid just to exist. No one is cutting you a bi-weekly check to sit in a cubicle and surf the net. People who have become comfortable with the complacency of bartering hours for dollars will always fail in the MLM because, unlike corporate America, your success is determined entirely by you and not by anyone else, for better or for worse. Don't feel like trying very hard today? Corporate America doesn't really care. As long as your body is in the cubicle, you'll get paid the same. But MLM? Good luck surviving if that's your attitude. On the flip side, feeling like an all-star today? Corporate America couldn't care less. You'll get paid the same. But MLM? Keep performing like an all-star for long enough, and relatively soon, you'll be living like one too. Another argument that I've heard and used to adamantly believe myself is that MLM favors the people who get in early because eventually there will be so many small slices of the pie going up the chain that there won't be any left for the people who didn't get in early. So the higher-ups are essentially feeding off the peons that are doing all the work. Well, that's exactly what society's traditional brainwashing would have you believe. It's what I was brainwashed to believe for many years. But that is completely false. In fact, that is exactly what corporate America is doing every single day. In in corporate America, you cannot make more than your boss. It's impossible. The only way to accomplish that feat is to become the boss. Like I already outlined, your odds are already pretty poor. On top of that, your boss likes being the boss. Trust me, he doesn't have a whole lot of incentive to go out of his way to mentor, coach, train, and teach you how to put him out of a job. If your boss is anything more than three to five years away from retirement, he does not want to mentor you. He fears you. MLM is the exact opposite in every way. First off, 
you absolutely can make more than your higher ups. That's because they're not higher ups at all, just further alongs. If a further along decides to slow down or stop altogether, a newbie can catch up to and surpass them pretty quickly. It's because that little slice of the pie that's going up the chain is entirely dependent upon the difference in volume between the two people. When the difference in volume is large, such as when you're first getting started, the slice of the pie that goes up is also fairly large. But as the difference in volume between you and your further along decreases, so does the size of the slice that goes up. Eventually, when your volume equals that of your further along, the slice goes away altogether and you are now just as far along as they are. So what's the catch? What's the point of building a team if that slice of the pie will eventually go away as they get more successful? There still has to be some incentive for recruiting and building a team, otherwise no one would do it. Well, when you build a team and your team members build teams of their own and they begin to be successful, it's true. You do lose that little slice of their sales volume pie. But in turn, you qualify for the big boy bonuses and leadership compensation that comes to successful team builders. And that's why, unlike corporate America, the further alongs don't just want their newbies to succeed, they need their newbies to succeed. Their success and livelihood literally depends on making sure the newbies succeed to the fullest extent possible. So you'd better believe that a further along who wants to keep pushing up the compensation staircase, the same staircase that everyone else is on, is going to do everything in their power to drag you up that staircase with them. Because the more you succeed, the more they succeed. And if you don't succeed, then they don't succeed and they just wasted a ton of time investing into mentoring you with the hope that you would both succeed together. When's the last time your corporate boss maniacally drove you towards success so that you could succeed together? When was the last time your corporate boss set a goal to help you surpass him because it would only mean more success for him as well? Probably hasn't ever happened, like ever. Anyway, this is quite a long rant, and if you've made it this far, you're probably thinking I'm going to make some kind of sales pitch to you to come join my team and drink my Kool-Aid so I can swindle you out of your $200 initial investment. Not so. While I have somewhat touted the benefits of MLMs that are often misunderstood by the brainwashed populace of America, my purpose in this post is not to have everyone quit their day jobs and join up with the next MLM they find. Be warned, there are tons of poorly run MLMs with no integrity that do scam people out of their money. It's a fact of life. Likewise, there are plenty more really well run MLMs that have a whole host of shady people in their ranks that will try to scam you out of your money. Also a fact of life. If you ever do come across one, just be sensible about it. Don't be too trusting, but don't continue being a brainwashed corporate American robot either. Now the actual point of this post. I've been struggling to find myself and my dream as a fully integrated part of the world's largest pyramid scheme for nine years now. And let me tell you, there's nothing here for dreamers like me. That's why I started this blog in the first place. If you're a dreamer too, please take a step back while you are still young and pause to think about what it is that you really want in life. Don't spend nearly a decade chasing the coin, trading hours for dollars, only to look back and wonder where the entire prime of your life went. Go live. Be passionate. Be motivated. Be hungry. Be driven. Be relentless in the the pursuit of your potential. Go start new businesses. Go back to school. Go chase a career or job as long as you know that's what you really want. Go learn a trade. Go explore the world. Go write books. Go sing and dance on Broadway. Go invent something new. Go be a missionary. Go make the world a better place. Go and don't be afraid to fail. Go and be willing to fail until you succeed. Heck, even go join an MLM if you feel like it. Whatever you do. Just do it with all your heart. And trust me, if you take the time beforehand to find something you are passionate about, you'll realize that doing it with all your heart really isn't all that hard. Really isn't all that hard.